What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Silent Tech once again, and the original premise of this video was just going to be showing you guys the hash rates for the Threadripper 1950X on Crypto Knight V7, Crypto Knight Heavy, and Crypto Knight Lite V7. However, because of some of the discoveries I made and some of the clarifications that need to be made so you guys understand what's going on, I wanted to kind of aim this more towards why the Crypto Knight Heavy may be a bad idea for Sumo coin and some of the other coins that decided to pick this algorithm over going with Monero 7, so stick around. Welcome back. In case you aren't up to date on exactly what's going on here, Sumo coin and a few other coins that were on Crypto Night went ahead and changed their algorithm to Crypto Night Heavy. This was done when the ASICs were announced for Crypto Knight to prevent ASICs on their networks. However, it did cause quite a few headaches, especially if we're talking about CPU mining. Now, on the rest of the algorithm changes to Crypto Knight V7 and Crypto Knight Lite V7, you only saw about a 10% decrease on all CPUs in hash rate. So, for example, original Crypto Knight, we saw that we had a hash rate of about 1100 on the Threadripper 1950X. Moving to the new algorithm for Monero, we got pretty much around a 900, and 900 to 950 hash rate as opposed to the 1100, so we took about a 10% hit. We saw this as well, of course, on TurtleCoin, and this happened with the Crypto Knight Lite to Crypto Knight Lite V7. And we saw about another 10% decrease going down from about 4,000 to about 3,500 to 3,600. Now the big hit was with Crypto Knight Heavy. And Crypto Knight Heavy coming from Crypto Knight pretty much cut your CPU hash rate in half. So why is this? Well, there are pretty much three different algorithms here and different ways each one of them handle things. However, the light, heavy, and just regular all relate to the amount of cash that they use in the CPU. So for example, on the Crypto Knight version, you're going to be using two megabytes of cash, while on Crypto Knight Lite, you use one megabyte of cash, and on Crypto Knight Heavy, you use four megabytes of cash. So if you have a CPU, for example, like the Threadripper 1950X, you would say, okay, well, it says in the stats that it has 40 megabytes of cache. Divide that by two, and I can use 20 threads. However, you'll notice that you can only actually use about 16 threads. This isn't actually tied to the fact that you can't use SMT, because if you take a look at Crypto Knight Lite, for example, which only use, uses one megabyte of cache, you can use all 32 threads on the 1950X. So what is actually going on here? Well, it's not so much cache limited overall cache, but it's actually specifically L3 cache. And if you take a look at the specifics on the 1950X in particular, you'll notice that you actually only have 32 megabytes of cache. So you have effectively one megabyte of cache per thread because it's a 16 core processor with 32 threads. So while on a Crypto Knight Lite algorithm, you can use all 32 threads, on a Crypto Knight algorithm, you can only use up to 16 threads. This gets extra worse when you bump up that requirement to four megabytes. So now that we require four megabytes of cache, L3 cache in particular, we can only use eight cores on the Threadripper 1950X, which means we essentially have a ton of threads left over and a ton of, well, we have eight more cores, entire cores left over, physical cores, on the Threadripper 1950X that we can't even utilize. And you'll notice that if you go ahead and try to manually in something like XMR stack, set the cores and the amount of cores by adding them, you'll start decreasing your hash rate on a per core basis. And this is because essentially when you start adding in those cores, the cores start fighting for the cache and the cache is limited. So that's why when you hear somebody say, well, you're not getting as good of a hash rate because it's cache limited, this is an issue. And the other interesting part about this, if you were going to say move on to something like a typical Pentium CPU, so something that's in 
most mining rigs and you're like, well, I don't want to put that to waste. So a G5400, for example, over here, which I'm just getting to testing, it only has four megabytes of L3 cache. And so effectively it can only mine on one core, even though it has four threads, two cores and four threads. And so this really kind of damages the Kryptonite heavy algorithm because we see pretty much that it's phased out CPU mining. If you're gonna be going ahead and deciding on which coin that is Kryptonite and supports CPU mining that you wanna mine with on your rig, you're probably gonna to have to pick a Kryptonite light algorithm or maybe a Kryptonite algorithm at best. And with the decreases on Kryptonite and Kryptonite light, it gets even more tricky. And this is pretty much the premise of the video though. As far as I feel about this entire situation, I think going up to requiring four megabytes of cash for Kryptonite Heavy and some of the coin choices that decided to do that really has damaged the ability to mine with CPUs and I'm not really behind that. However, I will say that the reasoning behind it, or at least the proposed reasoning, is that they said they wouldn't have to fork again. Whereas if we're talking about Kryptonite 7 and Monero, for example, the plan is to fork every six months, which can get pretty tricky, A, right? And B, will actually kind of hurt uh, adoption rate. So forking that much can be a problem, and Sumo Coin's argument is going with Kryptonite Heavy will prevent this. Either way you look at it though, it does appear that pretty much ASICS is causing a whole bunch of problems across the entire mining community that makes everything super interesting. However, I'm not really sure that we necessarily need to be forking away from ASICS because at the end of the day, I don't think that Sumo Coin's theory on not being able to build ASICS for it or not having to fork as much is necessarily true. I think they won't have to fork as much because they aren't on the same algorithm that Monero's on. So the ASICs are going to be primarily leaning towards the larger coins that are more profitable. So if you fork off away from the algorithms that the popular coins are using, then you have a stronger likelihood of not having to deal with ASICs in the future. This, however, does not mean by any means that you couldn't program an ASICs for Cryptodite Heavy. It just means it's gonna be less likely. And what you've ended up doing is further increasing the difficulty on your network for the people that are trying to mine it by going to heavy. So this is kind of all of the discoveries I made between all of the Kryptonite algorithms. I think the Kryptonite light is going to be the most effective for CPU mining. And that's the conclusion I've come to. And so if you're talking about, you know, being able to put the, the most amount of work and load onto your CPU and get the most out of it, regardless of how profitable each coin is, Kryptonite Light as an algorithm, Kryptonite Light V7 as an algorithm is going to be the best choice. So if you can find a coin that you prefer to mine with that particular algorithm, I'd recommend it because it's only going to requ require one megabyte of cash. I hope this clears all this up and you guys can kind of understand exactly what's going on here. If you have any questions or would like to have a further discussion in the comment section or over on our Discord, you can check that out in the description below. Thanks for watching. I thought it was kind of neat and it was kind of something we needed to discuss that I hadn't seen a video on. If you think I'm going the completely wrong direction, let me know. And other than that, I'll see you next Tuesday.